Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are some friends to lovers romances. I personally love the friends to lovers trope. To me it is superior than the enemies to lovers. That's just me, that's just me. So I have 10 romances that are fantastic friends to lovers. So let's get into these. Let me know, by the way, when you're watching this video, comment which is better, friends or enemies to lovers. I'm, I'm curious to see what y'all think. Okay, so the first one that I have is one of my favorites. This is Next to You by Hannah Bonham Young. This is the indie edition. Normally you'll see a different cover nowadays because Hannah got picked up by a publisher and her books have a different cover now. This is the romance between Lane and Matt and this is the second book in a series. They met in book number one and they are best friends to the respective people in the couple in book number one and Elaine deals a lot with anxiety. I really really felt her on that. One night she's just scrolling online and finds this bus school bus for sale and she decides she's gonna buy it and fix it up and turn it into a mobile home and Matt just so happens to work at like a car place and owns the business and so he's gonna help her fix it all up and throughout the project if you will the two of them get closer and fall in love and it is so stinking cute I love these two so much and I love their banter and there's always a little something between them. This one of that friend, those friends to lovers romances where like you can just see something the whole time. They're both not blind, okay? They are both not blind, but they've decided to not say anything because they don't want to ruin their friendship because they care about the person so stinking much. And they honestly can't believe that the other person could even want them. Like. They're like, no way, no way. Both of them think that way. So um, yeah, I love this one. It's a great Friends to Lovers. Hannah Bonham Young knows how to write a fantastic Friends to Lovers. Next, I have Funny Feelings by Tara DeWitt. This one is a very popular one. This is a single dad romance um, and both of them are comedians, which I've never read about before reading this. There is an age gap. The heroine is just starting out kind of in her comedian career and our hero is her coach he was a very famous comedian and then he had a daughter and he decided like he wants to put his priorities elsewhere but he decided to coach our heroine and something happens where these two have to fake date for the media so it's a little bit of fake dating in there as well but i loved the heroine's relationship with the hero but also the hero's kid she is deaf and everyone signs like the three of them sign together and i love that but these two are close friends they know like everything about each other they are so funny but yeah throughout their like little fake relationship parts they actually end up like admitting their feelings because there's always again there's always there's a little spark there they, they know that there's a little something mm -mm. like if they did something something could probably happen but they don't think that the other person would ever want to be with them both of them think that as well which they could not be more wrong next i have don't want you like a best friend by emma l Alban, Alban. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Please correct me in the comments. Um, so this one is actually a sapphic historical, which I had never read before at that point because there are not a lot to choose from. And it was so stinking good. So both of these heroines, they are out into society. One is kind of seasoned. She's been out for a few years and the other one is, this is her debut year. And um, she decides to make a friend in the other heroine. Through the friendship, they end up realizing that their parents know each other. So her mom, and her dad, like they know each other. They're both single, they both aren't with anyone. And they keep giving each other interesting looks and glances and like, oh my gosh, our parents know each other. Turns out their parents used to court like back in the day when they were their age. And they're like, we're gonna parent trap them basically. <laughs> um, and they're going to trick them and get them alone and do these little schemes. And throughout these schemes and whatnot, they realize that they are actually falling for each other as well. So it is so good. This one, is the friends to lovers where it just sneaks up on them out of nowhere, like like their friendship is first and foremost, and it starts out as a friendship purely, and then like, boom, they realize that they're in love with each other. Like, I actually really love that. Next is The Friendship Study by Ruby Barrett. This one's actually really fun and how it starts out, both characters are actually set up on a blind date with each other, and it doesn't really go well. <laughs> they both like aren't really ready for a relationship, they don't really care honestly they're just giving their friend a solid you know what i mean their mutual friend at the end of the day just think like okay i'm never gonna see that person again oh well but they do they end up seeing each other again at a study that the local university is doing on adult friendships and how adults make friendships which is incredibly hard so 
them incredibly hard. Um, and they're both in this study, and one of the big rules of the study is like you cannot hook up with, get with, fall in love with anyone in this program because it is a friendship study, right? Um, but the more time they spend together and get to know each other and do like friendship exercises, they realize, oh my gosh, wait, <laughs> we're perfect for each other. <laughs> so it's really good. It has amazing um, queer representation, chronic pain representation. It's really good. I have to mention two books in a series. Okay, so I have to mention um, the Love Light series. Um, by Bikir Boris, and I think that's the title of the series, Love Light. But first one is Love Light Farms, and I don't own Mixed Signals. So I'm talking about Mixed Signals in a second. Um, but this is book number one, and it is like Christmassy. There is like a Christmassy vibe to it, but I feel like you could read it any time of year, honestly. Um, I think every book like takes place in a certain season, but you don't need to read the book in that season, if that makes sense. So this one is the romance between Stella and Luca. They've been best friends for years. Stella actually owns runs this Christmas tree farm in this a very small town that I absolutely adore. If you want to read a book that gives Stars Hollow vibes, like town-wise, you got it. You got to pick up this series. I'm just saying. She's really down on money. She needs money for her farm. Um, and she decides to enter this contest. She ends up actually winning it, but she wins it by giving like a little lie that she runs this Christmas tree farm with her you know, boyfriend or fiance and she don't she don't have a man she don't have a man and so Luca decides to like be her fake whatever the case may be um for her during this um kind of like interview process for this possible prize they could win um and our heroine has no idea like Luca's feelings like Luca has been pining after her for so long so it's really good I really like this one um and then I also love book number three that has this trope in it. This is Mixed Signals. This one is my favorite in the series. So uh, both of our characters in here actually know each other, they're friends, um, but their friendship doesn't really pick up until they actually start fake dating each other. It's hard to describe. So both these two end up actually bumping into each other on a night out. The heroine had a really bad date and the hero's just like with the boys or whatever. And the hero like says like, here, let me take you home. He takes her home. They end up complaining about their dating lives, how like they just can't seem to do anything right. No one is, their forever person always feels like everyone finds their forever person after they meet them and every person they go on a date with it's absolutely awful there must be something wrong with them so they decide to date each other and like basically write up notes on each other to figure out like how they can be better at dating or finding their person whatever the case may be so they're kind of like real life dating but also like kind of like fake dating at the same time because they don't think like this will actually become a thing but it does it does it's so good the heroine is a baker i love that part in here and the hero is obsessed with her treats like literally obsessed with them <laughs> and could eat like 50 in a sitting of anything that she makes i love men that are absolutely obsessed with like feral for the heroine's like artistry or something she makes something she does something she bakes whatever the case may be i love men who are obsessed with women like yes so i love this one they, they started out as like a friendship obviously and it blossoms, it blossoms. <laughs> Next, I have Ready or Not by Cara Bastone. This one is one where a hero has been pining for a while as well. <laughs> so our heroine actually gets pregnant, not from the hero, so not the hero's baby trope is this one. The baby daddy is not really in the picture, like things are happening in there. He's not a bad guy, just things are happening, okay? And Shep, her best friend's brother, who's also her like best friend, like their best friends as well, um, like basically steps up and is like, I'm gonna help you in whatever way I can. I'm here for you, I'm here for this kid. Like, let's do this thing. And he is full on there for the heroine and the baby, like I said, and he is so stinking sweet. I love Shep, he's one of my favorite book boyfriends that I read about this year. Like, golden retriever energy to the T. Like, he is so stinking sweet. And when the heroine realizes that Shep may or may not have been like absolutely in love with her all these years, she's shocked. She's like, uh, how could this amazing man like be in love with me? Heck no, that's not possible. Another one with a lot of pining is Dukes and Deeks by Tori Jean. This one is really fun. These two have been best friends for a while, for a few years. I think her brother, um, like this is her brother's best friend, but also her best friend as well, if that makes sense. He's a hockey player and something happened to him where he is not able to play hockey on his team for a little bit. I won't spoil that part. And he decides to go back home, basically like tail between his legs 
and he's now in town for the Jane Austen festival that the heroine puts on every single year. She needs someone to play Mr. Wickham and she's gonna play Lydia and the hero doesn't really know what he's signing up for but he signs up for it anyway and these two have to play Lydia and Wickham throughout the festival and make it like authentic looking and their feelings kind of like come out in the midst of that. I loved like the role playing Jane Austen stuff in here. It kind of looks like this could be historical. No, they're just dressed up as Jane Austen characters present day. But this one is really fun and both characters have been pining after each other. So I love, I love like pining and longing. I'm obsessed with it. Next, I kind of have an anthology. This is Sweetest in the Gale by Olivia Dade. The last story in this anthology, I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. I'm so sorry. But only the last story in here would fill this um, friends to lovers trope. So both characters in this like story have been friends since college and want the hero's divorced and the heroine's never been with anyone before. They like, never had a husband but they're both in their 40s and the heroine realizes that she might have breast cancer but she doesn't have any health insurance so her best friend being the amazing man that he is is like okay you're gonna marry me and you're gonna get on my insurance and we're gonna figure this out like you're not gonna stress about it this is what's gonna happen and yeah things things happen between the two of them it's really good the caretaking the way he puts her first in every way possible i'm a blow I'm, I'm in love with him i love that story and then i also have the four leaf by lee jaquo this is my last one for this video this one is a short novella if you love a primal king or like someone chases after someone this is when you gotta read so this one is one of her novellas that kind of like has a little loose holiday magic link to it not like magic magic but like it takes place during a holiday. So this one is St. Patrick's Day. Um, the hero's family, I think, owns this hotel that is called the Four Leaf. And it's kind of like St. Patrick's Day themed, like Irish themed. And these two have been best friends for so long. And I can't really spoil something happens because it is a novella. Something happens where feelings are kind of revealed and all that stuff and uh, kinks are shown. And it's really fun. I think we read this for a, I think I read this during a novellathon and it was actually really fun. So I definitely want to pick up more Lee Jo Ho books, but I really liked this Friends to Lovers aspect because these two knew like absolutely everything about each other and they just needed to add that, I guess like physical intimacy to make it like the best relationship possible. Anyways, there you have it. Those were some Friends to Lovers romances. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, but if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me what emoji are we gonna do? Let's do the um, heart hand emoji because that one's really cute. So anyways, uh, yeah, thank y'all so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.